Imagine a world powered not by coal, oil, or natural gas, but by the sun. Sounds like a fairy tale, right? Well, it's actually not that far from becoming a reality, you know. But it's also not as simple as it seems. Solar panels are one of the driving forces of modern sustainable energy. I mean, when you think about it, that big ball of burning gas is the ultimate generator. Plus, most of the planet enjoys its light every single day at no cost whatsoever. Solar panels transform the sun's mighty light into electricity that we can use. We already have this technology. I'm not talking sci-fi here. So why don't we put these things up everywhere, cut our dependence on sources of energy that pollute our planet, and go totally renewable? Again, it's complicated. First of all, solar panels require space. Sure, they're not gigantic constructions. A single home utility panel measures on average about 65 by 39 inches. But one of those panels is just about enough to light a few light bulbs. That means to power a whole house, you'll need more panels. Actually, anywhere from 10 to 50 or even more in some cases. Now, just imagine putting up so many 15-square-foot plates for the sake of powering a single home. And how many will it take to power a whole city, or a whole country, or the whole world for that matter? Secondly, solar panels can't be installed just anywhere. Since they collect sunlight, they need a place where there's a lot of it every day. That's why some regions of the world just aren't suitable for these things. And that doesn't only include subarctic regions with their long, cold polar nights. Sunlight is best served pure and clear to get the maximum efficiency from solar panels. If a region's climate is mostly cloudy, then they won't be able to produce as much energy as they could in sunny conditions. So this brings certain limitations on where you can install these panels. Bummer, huh? And last but not least is the cost of installation. Of course, the whole point of installing solar panels now is to cut costs down the road, as well as help the environment, of course. But the original expenses are sky-high. To build and install enough panels to power a decent-sized city, you'll need hundreds of millions of dollars. Not many governments or corporations would be happy to fork over so much dough in one go. So if a quest for renewable energy for everyone will ever be completed, it will require the financial support of many countries and companies at once. Yeah, good luck getting everybody on the planet to cooperate. Well, what do we have? Seems like we need a large enough open space where there's a lot of sunlight every single day with little or no clouds. It also shouldn't be too far away from too many countries, because exporting the energy over long distances would make the project even more expensive. Hmm, let's see. A huge, scalding hot area with as much sun as you could ever need and located just across the sea from Europe. You thinking what I'm thinking? Right, the Sahara Desert! The largest hot desert in the world seems like the perfect place to install as many solar panels as humankind could need. By the latest estimates, in fact, it could accommodate more than four times as many panels as we actually need to meet our current demands. Let's break it down. In 2017, people all over the world used about 18 terawatts of energy. The Sahara, if covered completely in solar panels, would generate 79 terawatts per year. That would cover everything we need plus some. Basically, it's not even necessary to install that many solar panels. Just a quarter would be more than enough. As an added bonus, Dr. Yan Li, a researcher from the University of Illinois, explains that a large amount of these panels in the Sahara would benefit the desert climate too. Stay with me here, it gets a little complicated. The color of the sand there is quite light, so it reflects a lot of sunlight back into the atmosphere. So dark-colored solar panels would make the surface take in more of the sun, increasing the ground's temperature. That in turn will lead to warmer air rising up, mixing with cooler air, condensing, and then coming back down as… any guesses? Rainfall! Exactly. Eventually, the Sahara would turn from an arid desert into a savanna or even a blooming garden. Whoa! The Sahara Botanical Garden. I like the sound of that. Or maybe the Sahara Rainforest? Mm, I don't know. Leave me your own suggestions in the comments. So, what's the deal? 
Why aren't we there yet, happily hauling solar panels to the desert? Well, to start with, it only sounds like a perfect plan on paper. When you get to actually carrying it out, that's when the real trouble begins. First and foremost, how would you transport all this energy across the world? Okay, the most logical thing to do is to get it to Africa itself and Europe, since they're the closest to the source. But there's still the issue of transporting solar energy across the sea, which would be no easy feat to say the least. New power lines would need to be built and brand new infrastructure would have to be introduced. And I don't know if you could transport this solar energy from the Sahara all the way to the Americas. Sorry guys. Anyway, add all that to the cost of installing the panels and you'd be looking at hundreds of billions of dollars in investment. Maybe European countries could handle such costs, but the same can't be said for a lot of African nations. Solar energy could bring in immense benefits to them, but a large majority just wouldn't be able to afford it. Expenses aside though, there's also the question of working with local leaders. You see, the Sahara belongs to several countries at once. So to build anything at all there, you'd need permission from all of them. Of course, you'd think everyone would see what good such a project brings. So there shouldn't be any trouble negotiating. But nevertheless, problems can arise when it comes to working with local authorities. Maybe an example will help make it clearer. For instance, one country says, sure, you're allowed passage through my territory. You work together for several months when, let's say, a different person takes over the country, as does happen. Hopefully they'd continue working with you like their predecessor did, but that's not guaranteed. If they don't, you're once again thrown back to the negotiation stage, and you can't go through the territories previously agreed upon. Naturally, the supply chain is broken, and what's worse, you might not even reach a new agreement at all. Maybe this country has changed their mind about the whole project. That, of course, would be a huge risk, especially assuming a bunch of money has already been put into this thing. But hey, let's look at the bright side! <laughs> even if it seems impossible or super risky at the moment, why can't we at least hope it'll happen someday? I mean, a greener Sahara and a greener world, thanks to all this renewable energy, are definitely worth fighting for. Plus, you never know. They might come up with a super innovative way to make this thing a reality that you and I never even imagined. So, do you think it's high time we switch to solar energy? Or do you think the future lies in another source? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click that subscribe button to stay on the bright side of life. Hey.